Hi everyone, it's Sean, and I am back again, this time with chapter 5 of Gabriel's album, The Fifth Song. Before we start, if you could please like this video and subscribe and ring the bell icon and tell your friends and share it, that would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> anyway, let's start reading chapter 5, The Fifth Song. We'd been on tour for over a week now, and it's been absolutely epic. I don't think anyone could ever have prepared me for our first concert tour. Obviously, we've performed live before, but this is next level shit. Performing at awards shows is probably the closest we'd come to it. Thousands and thousands of people pack into the arenas each night just to see us. I always get hit with nerves right before we perform, but once we're on stage and performing, it's like nothing else. None of us have ever really been big into drugs, but it's the biggest high I've ever had. When we're not doing sound checks, interviews, or performing, I'm spending all my time with Ariana. We've hung out with the other guys a bit, and they've all told me that they like her. Even Sebastian grudgingly admitted it three days ago. We're on our way back from meeting some competition winners and doing an interview with local radio station's DJs before tonight's show, and Hayden is walking next to me. Ariana's going to be in the pit tonight, isn't she? He asked. The pit is what we call the area between the barrier holding back the general admission audience and the concert stage. Yeah, she is. Last night, Heather convinced Ariana to come into the pit with her to watch tonight's concert, and I'm really nervous about Ariana being there to watch me. I just wanted to have a good time, and Heather said it's a lot better than watching from backstage. Are you nervous? Hayden asked me shrewdly. He knows me too well, and I smile at him. A little bit. You'll be fine. Just imagine her naked or something. Gabriel Knight gets boner on stage. Sounds like a great headline for tomorrow's newspaper. I grin at him. Hayden laughs. Any publicity is good publicity, right? We're both laughing as we reach the main backstage area. I can see Ariana sitting on a wooden chair near the stairs to the stage, and I smile when I see her. She's looking down at her phone, and I long to run my fingers through her long brown hair. It's falling down around her face and she looks so sweet and normal amidst the craziness of people running around backstage. I stride quickly toward her. She looks up from her phone and sees me, causing a smile to cross her face, and I feel my heart swell. I'm so lucky to have her. Hey, sweetheart. I greet her. Are you ready for the show? I sure am, she says as she stands up, and I give her a hug before kissing her firmly on the lips. I'll try not to let you down. As if you could, you're going to rock. Cooper arrives and Ariana stands next to me as a circle forms with everyone backstage. Cooper gives us a speech about how we're going to have an amazing night tonight and for everyone to keep their energy levels high. Starlight Galaxy comes off stage and I high five Alistair when he passes me. The roadies are spurred into action. They start bringing the Starlight Galaxy equipment off the stage and replacing it with the items for our set. While they're doing it, I start doing my vocal exercises and I'm pleased that my voice feels good tonight. I try and keep my nerves in check as I finish up my exercises. Hayden is tapping one of the benches with his drumsticks, and Sebastian and Harrison both recheck their already perfectly tuned guitars before the roadies take them on stage. We get the all clear to go on stage and I nod. You ready guys? I ask them. Sure, let's fucking do this. Sebastian grins at me and starts up the stairs to the stage, taking them two at a time. I laugh and follow him up the stairs. Hayden and Harrison are behind me. We take our positions in the darkness of the stage. I'm standing in front of my microphone, and this is the part when I'm nervous as shit. I'm always terrified that the sound guys will fuck up and the mic will catch me saying something dumb to the other guys. Then, when it goes live, a tiny part of my brain panics that I'm going to say something stupid without thinking. This isn't new. It's something I've dealt with for years. It's like when you're walking across a bridge and you're worried you'll climb over and fall. You don't want to do it, but your brain tells you that you could anyway. It's that, but with 40,000 people watching you. The main arena's lights go down and the entire crowd screams in unison. Once the crowd is able to see us, the screaming gets even more intense. Our earplugs protect our hearing and help us to be able to hear the music. Before the screaming finishes, Sebastian plays a single chord on his guitar and the sound of it reverberates throughout the arena. As we launch into the first song for the evening, my nerves dissipate. I'm completely at home as soon as we're performing. Fuck-ups will happen. They always do. We laugh them off or acknowledge them to the crowd. It's never as bad as what I imagine in the moments before a show starts. I'm aware that I'm performing to the next level tonight, and I know that it's because Ariana is watching me. 
I can see her and Heather standing in the pit, right in front of centre stage as photographers move around the area, taking pictures of us. Every now and again, I catch Ariana's gaze and she gives me the most brilliant smiles when our eyes meet. We're halfway through Midnight Rebellion when I notice Ariana and Heather spin around so their backs are to the stage and they're facing the audience. I glance over at Harrison, who has noticed it as well and is looking concerned. Security guards are hauling fans over the barrier. I can see the fans attempting to hit and kick each other, and they're yelling. I can't hear what they're saying, but I'm sure it's not pleasant from the looks on their faces. I'm singing the second verse, and I trail off mid-lyric. The guys taper off their playing too, with Hayden stopping last, because he's at the back and probably can't see everything that we can see. Please calm down, I urge the crowd. We don't want anyone to get hurt. I'm also really worried that Ariana will get hurt. She and Heather have their backs to us as they watch what's going on, so I can't see her face. We're also not impressed by any fan who harms another fan, Sebastian adds to my comment. We just want you all to have a good time. There's plenty of us to go around. I give a bright smile to the entire audience, and I'm relieved to see the rest of the front row section seems fine now that the troublemakers are gone. Now, where were we? We pick up the song at the start of the second verse and the crowd cheers. Ariana and Heather turn to stand back where they originally were, and I smile at her, relieved that she's safe. Our next song is If I Were You, which is a ballad Harrison wrote about Heather. I sing it to Ariana tonight, though, making my way to the middle of the stage, and I lock eyes with her as often as I can allow, so that she knows I mean these words for her. I see Heather lean over to Ariana and say something to her, then they both start laughing. I'm confused and make a note to ask her what was so funny later. Here I am, trying to be her romantic boyfriend, and she's too busy giggling to be wooed by my gesture. Ariana catches my gaze again and stops laughing at once, just beaming at me as I sing to her. I give up on looking around the crowd and sing to her for the rest of the song. The rest of the concert passes without incident. We've got all of the songs on cards have been dealt on the set list tonight, along with some of our favourite classic rock covers. Sebastian insisted that we do November Rain by Guns N' Roses. It's his favourite song to play live, and whenever he's given a choice, he will try and get us to play it. As we're coming off the stage before the encore, we're all running on a high, and he says, Tonight was awesome. Did you see the fans go mental when I did the guitar solo for November Rain? Dude, you're not Slash, and you never will be. You know that, right? I give him a cheeky grin. Sebastian rolls his eyes at me. That's fine, because I'm better than Slash. Sure, bro, if you say so, Hayden scoffs. The lights come back up, interrupting our conversation, and we go back on stage for the encore, which is the only song on cards have been dealt that we haven't played tonight, and the crowd goes mad before we say goodbye for a final time. As we wrap up the encore, Ariana and Heather stand and cheer and clap with the rest of the crowd. I smile at Ariana one last time before we head off stage. I'm cut that you guys don't agree that I'm better than Slash, Sebastian says, continuing our conversation from before the encore. Hayden laughs and smirks at him. It's not that I don't agree per se, it's just that I don't think Slash would screw up the outro. What can I say? I was distracted by this hot as shit fan in the front row. Hopefully security will get her backstage for me. Sebastian has his own smirk on his face when he says it. Harrison shakes his head and rolls his eyes. Anyway, great show guys. I high five him as Ariana walks up to me. I step forward, place my arms around her waist and spin her around in circles, causing her to laugh. Did you enjoy the show? I ask her after putting her down. Absolutely. You were amazing, Gabe. I was, wasn't I? I say unashamedly and she hits me playfully on the arm. I lead her down a corridor to my dressing room and open the door. She walks through in front of me and sits down in a cushy armchair in the corner of the room. I shut the door behind me and walk over to the rack that my regular clothes are hung on. What were you and Heather laughing about? I ask her as I pull my sweaty concert t-shirt over my head, standing topless for a moment. Ariana blinks at me as if she's struggling to focus, and I'm pleased with the effect that I have on her. Oh, there was a comment from one of the fans who thought you were singing If I Were You to her. Aha, she must have been behind you then. I smile at her, then ask, did you like the song? Yeah, it was beautiful. I hadn't heard you perform that one live before. It's such a wistful and dreamy song. Whenever I hear it, I imagine this beautiful beach with a storm rolling in across the ocean. You really do have a way with words, you know, I tell her, completely able to envisage what she's describing. I cross the room to where she's sitting. I still haven't put a new shirt on and I'm probably sweaty and disgusting, but Ariana doesn't seem to mind. I place a hand on either side of the armchair, trapping her in it. 
I bend down and kiss her on the lips, thoroughly exploring her mouth with my tongue and moving my hands to cradle her head while we kiss. When it ends, I kiss her lightly on her forehead and leave the room to shower in the attached ensuite, and I can hear Ariana breathing heavily as I walk away from her. If I stayed much longer, I was definitely going to fuck her. I don't really have the time right now because I have to get to the meet and greet. I stand under the warm spray and smile to myself. Tonight's show was amazing, and I loved getting to watch Ariana enjoying our show. Normally, she's in the area to the side of the stage, and I barely get to see her. It's crazy how attached I've become to her already. I only met her just under two months ago, but I'm happy I did. She's like a calm, soothing balm amidst all of this craziness, and I'm so glad that she came on tour with us. Sure, the sex is great, but it's just really grounding to have her here. She's a tiny bit of normality for me on this tour. I turn off the shower, step out, and grab a towel that I wrap around my waist. I walk into the dressing room and can't help but notice that Ariana is basically looking at me as though she wants to jump my bones. I smile at her and she blushes bright red, making me grin even harder. I turn to face the rack where my clothes are hanging and drop the towel into the laundry hamper next to it while fighting an erection because I'm naked. Ariana is about 10 feet away and I know exactly how much pleasure she can give me. As I get myself under control, I grab my jeans off the rack along with a pair of briefs. I pull both the briefs and jeans on before turning around. I lean casually against the bench, then wait for Ariana to look at me. She's looking away as though I need some kind of privacy from her. I mean, I do, but only because she turns me on like crazy and I have to go meet fans. When she does look at me, her face is flushed and I can tell that she's aroused, causing me to struggle with my body's response to that knowledge. Again. See anything you like, Ari? I taunt her with a wink. You know what my favourite thing is about Easter? She asks. I'm confused as hell by this change of topic and why she's talking about Easter when it's literally July. No, what? I ask her. Hot crust buns? She smirks at me. Very funny. I grin at her, and I'm thoroughly amused as I pull a clean t-shirt on because I didn't see that one coming. Let's go, I'm pretty sure I'm running late for the meet and greet. Ariana stands up and follows me out the door as we make our way to the meet and greet. This is one of my favourite parts of concerts. Most of the fans are genuinely nice and I'm truly grateful for them. Without them, I wouldn't have half of what I do. So it's always nice to get to meet them, take a photo, talk to them and find out what songs they like the best. As we walk through the main backstage area, Ariana follows slightly behind me and I sigh mentally. She's so paranoid about anyone knowing that we're together. Pretty much all of the crew know, but after shows there's always a chance of random fans hanging around. You know, the ones that get backstage by giving sexual favours to security or because Sebastian thought they looked hot. As we near the room for the meet and greet, our tour manager, Tanya, is peering out of the door to the room it's being held in. As we near the room for the meet and greet, our tour manager, Tanya, is peering out of the door to the room it's being held in. She sees me and frowns. You're late, Gabriel. Sorry, ma'am. I salute her, and she laughs and rolls her eyes at me as she holds the door open for us to walk through. Ariana makes a beeline for the side of the room, and I take in the room for a few seconds before a couple of fans see me and come over to talk. I talk to the first few fans, then when they're gone, some different fans make their way over to talk to me. It goes on like this, and eventually I'm talking to a pair of fans. I kind of know that the brunette one is flirting with me, because she's telling me all about how I'm her favourite member of Cruise Control, but even so, I'm surprised when she grabs my ass while we're having our photo taken. She keeps her hand on my ass the whole time we're standing there, and I completely freeze. I don't know what to do. Every cell in my body wants her hand the fuck off my ass, but I have a smile frozen on my face for our photo, and I am grateful as shit when she finally lets go. I thank her for coming to the show and for being a fan, then walk swiftly over to another group of fans who are hovering nearby, grateful as hell to get away from her. Hey, I'm Gabriel, I say to them. Hi Gabriel, I'm John. I shake his hand. Hi John. Melissa, Kit and Alex introduce themselves as well. They tell me that Kit won a competition online to come to the show. Kit seems shy, so I smile at them and ask, have you been a fan for long? Yeah, I came across you guys on YouTube about a year ago. It's awesome to get to meet you, they say with a smile. We don't really upload many videos to YouTube these days. We really should, I say as I nod my head. I'm distracted from the conversation I'm having as Melissa starts talking because I've just noticed that Sebastian has two fans standing with him and he has his arm around one woman's waist while he's holding the hand of the other one. For fuck's sake, 
I don't give a shit if he wants to have threesomes, but does he have to be so damn obvious about it? He's got a reputation for being a player for a good reason, of course. I couldn't tally up the number of women he slept with if I tried, and I don't think he could either. Since we got famous, he's gotten worse, though. He had plenty of women to choose from before, but now it's like he sees the crowd of fans as an all-you-can-eat buffet of women for him to pick and choose from as he sees fit. I kind of worry about him, but he brushes it off whenever I try to talk to him about it. I realise that Alex is looking at me and wanting an answer for some question I didn't hear. Oh, sorry, I missed that. What was your question? I'm the biggest douchebag. I try to ignore Sebastian and force myself to focus on the fans I'm standing with and answer their questions about the tour and the album. I notice a couple of the other groups of fans looking over at Sebastian and whispering as they do, and I can't stop myself from frowning. I wipe the expression from my face and smile at the group in front of me. Then my phone buzzes in my pocket. Sorry, one second. I say to them as I pull it out to see a text from Ariana on it. Are you okay? I look around at her and smile before turning back to the fans in front of me. Sorry, I just need to answer this. You sneaky girl. I'm fine. Just annoyed that Seb is probably going to get us bad press. I answer another of their questions as my phone buzzes in my hand with another text from Ariana. Not necessarily? Sorry about this. I apologise again as I tap out a reply to her. Two girls? Twice as likely that someone will talk. Texting each other is stupid, by the way. It was lovely to meet you. I tell them and shake their hands. Sorry, I have to go. No worries. Thanks for the awesome concert, Melissa says, and her friends agree with her. You're welcome. Congratulations again, Kit. I hope you had a great time. I smile at them, then turn to walk over to Ariana as I signal to Hayden that I'm going to leave. Hayden raises an eyebrow at me. The meet and greet isn't anywhere near done, but I am. I feel like an asshole for leaving early, but I'm tired and cranky and staying is probably a worse idea than bailing. So I shrug back at Hayden as I walk over to Ariana. She follows me out to the arena exit but doesn't say anything to me. We reach the large garage doors and I get into the nearest of the white vans that are here with drivers waiting to take us all back to the hotel. Ariana sits down next to me and I put my arm around her shoulders, then lean my head against the back of the seat and close my eyes. My entire body is aching. The silence here, plus the semi-darkness, is nice and soothing. I pick up our text conversation where we left off. I just wish he'd think things through a little more carefully. How do you know for sure that he's bringing both of them back to the hotel? She asks me. I'd bet my vanquish that he'll come back with at least one, if not the both of them. Can you imagine if that story got out? I open my eyes to look at her as I say this, and I'm so angry at the thought. I would have thought it would be good publicity for the band. Ariana is so sweet, but her opinion of the rock star lifestyle is probably informing her suggestion. Then again, that's generally what most people think. Hayden even joked about it with me earlier. Not all publicity is good publicity as far as I'm concerned. Yes, we're a rock band, but we don't have to be complete and utter assholes. I also think that women should be treated with respect, and Seb doesn't have the greatest history of that. A shrug. I think about his personal rule and I'm disgusted. I hate that people see what Sebastian does and assume that I'm doing the same thing. I have my own Playboy rock star reputation thanks to his antics and it drives me crazy. Hell, Ariana almost split up with me before the tour because she thought I wanted to live like that. You know I have my own issues with Sebastian, so I'll refrain from commenting. All I'll say is that after that first meeting, he has behaved impeccably toward me and I don't have a complaint about him. Ariana meets my gaze as she says this. Her tone is soothing and I find myself calming down. I squeeze her tight and smile at her. You're right, I'm just tired, I say as I kiss the top of her head. The rest of the entourage is making their way over to the cars now and they're loading into the vans to go back to the hotel. So obviously the meet and greet is over. Hey guys. Hayden smiles at us as he climbs into our van. You left early? Sebastian has both girls with him and I snort in disgust when I see them all get in one of the other vans. Hayden follows my gaze and nods. Ah, uh, yeah, gotta love him, right? Do we though? I ask, but I smile as I do. Yeah, bro, we do. Hayden grins back. Or we could kick him out of the band and ask Slash to join us? I raise an eyebrow at Hayden. Let's keep that as a backup plan, he laughs at me. It's not long before everyone is in the vans and we all head back to the hotel. So that was chapter five, the fifth song. 
and I will be back on Tuesday with my thoughts on that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I will include them in my discussion video, which I will be recording this weekend. And I have definitely some thoughts on that. It's a really short chapter, so maybe hopefully will be a shorter discussion video. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, yes, that is a very interesting chapter. Um, and the next chapter is the sixth song, which as I think, and I'm not wrong, <laughs> I just checked. Oh, no. Uh, oh, the sixth song, which I was thinking was when Ariana hangs out with Heather, but no, it's uh, Gabriel's version where they go and do Good Morning America. It's actually a really fun chapter. I really love doing it because it's where the stories divert. But that's the discussion for the chapter six discussion <laughs> chapter. So we'll talk about that then. In the meantime, if you could please like this video, please subscribe, please tell your friends and come along with me as we continue to read Gabriel's album. All right. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.